So in this video we're going to look at how to determine locations on a parametric, uh, parametrically defined curve where it's not smooth. So here I have uh, parametric equations of a cycloid and I've graphed this cycloid using GeoGebra and I graphed it in on the interval, I actually graphed it on the interval from 0 to 8 pi, but the cycloid's defined for it's defined for all real numbers. So t could run from negative infinity to infinity. I restricted my domain just to give us a picture to look at. So what we want to do when we look at the picture, and, and we and we also want to understand this keeps going. We want to look at and focus on these cusp. These are sharp points. These are places where the curve is not smooth. So those are the not smooth locations. Everywhere it's everywhere else it's smooth, and then suddenly you get this sharp uh, dir uh, directional change, uh, inducing a cusp. And the idea is is that these sharp uh, cusp or places where the parametric equation isn't smooth, those occur at places where the derivative of x is equal to zero, and the derivative of y is equal to zero. And this has to be simultaneously equal to zero. That's why I use the word and and not or here. So this is simultaneously equal to zero. Simultaneously. So anytime both, both directions come to a full stop at the same time, we get a sharp cusp or change in direction on our curve. And so to determine the locations where these uh, non-smooth uh, locations occur, we need to take the derivative of x and the derivative of y and we need to determine when those derivatives are equal to zero and then we need to look at when they're equal to zero and see if they are simultaneously equal to zero. So we'll start by working with this guy right here. So we have we have that x equals t minus sine of t. So if we take the derivative of that we're going to get one minus the cosine of t. And then what we need to do is determine when this is equal to zero. So we want to know when does one minus the cosine of t equals zero? When does this happen? Well, to do that, we just isolate the cosine function. So doing a little bit of manipulating, we would determine that the cosine of t would need to be equal to 1. I could add cosine to both sides here and then use the reflective, reflexive property of equality to reverse the order. And then I want to take the cosine inverse of both sides uh, to dig t out of here. But what we want to remember from trigonometry is when we take the cosine inverse of both sides when we're solving a trigonometric equation, we get two answers. By the even symmetry of the cosine function, we get plus or minus the angle that comes out of here. And then we know that the angles repeat themselves every two pi radians, so we go plus two pi k. And now we continue to solve. So we get plus or minus the cosine inverse of one so what is the angle for which the cosine is one? The angle for which the cosine is, uh, is one is just zero plus two pi k. And this is just gonna simplify to two pi k, where we're recognizing when we do this form, we're recognizing that k is an integer value, any integer that we want, zero plus or minus one plus or minus two, and so on and so forth. So now we know when we know the values of t for which x prime is zero. Now we need to come over here and find the values of t for which y prime is equal to zero. So we know that y is equal to one minus the cosine of t, which means that y prime is going to equal the sine of t and then we want to know when does the sine of t equal zero. And to do this, we take the sine inverse of both sides. So we go t equals the sine inverse of zero, and it needs to be plus two pi k. 
But what we need to re remember at this point from trigonometry is that the angles that uh, the, the, the solutions occur in supplementary pairs. So if the angle sine inverse uh, of zero is a solution, it's also going to be true that the supplement of this angle um, is a solution as well. So for, for cosine inverse, you get plus or minus the cosine inverse. For sine inverse, you get the angle and its supplement. So remember, supplement means that the two angles need to add up to, if we have supplements, then the two angles add up to 180 degrees. So the sine inverse is an angle. So what we want to remember is that if we want to figure out the supplement of an angle like theta, we take 180 degrees and so we subtract the other angle from it. Or if we're working in uh, radian world, we do the sum of the angles has to be pi radians. So we do pi minus an angle to find its angle supplement. So over here, it's also the case that t is going to be equal to pi minus the angle that the sine inverse function gives us, sine inverse of zero. And then they repeat every two pi radians, so two pi k, where k, again, has to be, it's not any real number, any integer you want. So zero plus or minus one plus or minus two and so on and so forth. And then we just solve this. The sine inverse of zero, well, well the angle that generates a sine of zero is zero, so we get zero plus two pi k equals two pi k. And so here I can see that this is actually matching exactly what I have over here. I get a second solution. I get or, and this is going to be pi minus, the sine inverse of zero is zero, plus two pi k equals pi plus two pi k. And notice they're definitely supplements. Pi or 180 degrees plus zero radians or zero degrees adds up to pi radians are 180 degrees. So they are angle supplements. So what we want to notice is that this is, is, not, uh, is not a value of t that causes x prime to be zero, but this value here does cause x prime to be zero. So it's not smooth when t equals two pi k where k is an integer. And you can kind of look up at the graph and verify this. So the not smooth places, where are they? Well, here's one here. That corresponds to k equals zero. Plug in k equal to zero, you get zero times two pi is, is, uh, is zero. So at zero radians, we have this cusp. When k equals one, we get two pi times one is two pi. When k is equal to two, we get two times two pi is four pi. When k equals three, we get six pi corresponding to this point right here, and so on and so forth. Now this other solution we got here that is, uh, gives us y prime equal to zero, but x prime isn't equal to zero, what does this correspond to on the graph? Well remember, if, if y prime is equal to zero, then we have a horizontal tangent line. So the horizontal tangent lines are showing up here, 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 and, and look at this. When, uh, when we uh, let k equals zero, what do we get? We get k plus two pi times zero is just pi. So this horizontal tangent line right here is happening at pi radians. When k equals, uh, sorry, right here, when k equals one, we get two pi times one is two pi plus pi is three pi. So there's the, the next location of a horizontal tangent plus two pi more. So when k is equal to two, we get two times two pi is four pi, plus one pi is five pi, corresponding to a horizontal tangent line. So this other solution that we got from y prime equals zero is actually locating for us the horizontal tangent lines, but the solutions that we got for y prime equals zero and x prime equals zero, where they were simultaneously equal to zero, two pi k, those are corresponding to the cusp that we see in the graph, the places where the graph isn't smooth.